Hello, William here again. Firstly, I must apologise for this odd picture-in-picture -picture setup, but that's a consequence of not having your microphone plugged in while you're doing your introductory video before you start work on the piece of wood. So, last week I mentioned that this week I was going to tackle another unfinished project in the form of a piece of stabilised burr elm. Now this piece of stabilised burr elm is about uh, 10 inches long by 3 inches in diameter uh, and because the wood has some personal history plus the investment I've made in the cactus juice I wanted to create uh, a small keepsake from this piece of wood. So I decided on a slim bud vase uh, for this project. Now when I stabilised this piece of wood about a year ago I don't think I made a particularly good job of it and therefore I expect when I get uh, turned down towards the centre in uh, two places on this bud vase that I'm going to come across uh, punky wood that is not stabilised so I'm probably going to have to do it again. Now in marking out the piece there's already a lot of dust coming off confirming my suspicion that uh, the stabilisation process wasn't very good. So the plan is then to get the outside roughed out uh, then drill a pilot hole using a force a bit and restabilize. Okay, so here I am going in with a 30mm force and a bit, and as you can see, a lot of dust coming out. And because of the depth of intrusion required, I have to also use the Forstner extension rod. Now in a couple of seconds you'll notice a puff of smoke and steam coming through the side of the piece uh, as I approach the maximum intended depth of the cut. Now rather than indicating a problem with wall thickness, it's just a case that the wood is very porous and re-stabilisation should fix this. Now in order to carry out the re-stabilisation process I'm going to need to dismount the wood from the chuck. But before I do this I'm just going to mark the position of the wood in the chuck so that I can remount it as accurately as possible. So the three principal items we're going to need for the stabilisation process is the vacuum pump, the vacuum chamber and the bottle of cactus juice stabilising resin. Now wood will float on top of the resin which is something you don't want so it either needs to be weighted down or in my case here I'm using two small wedges to keep it in place. Now to be honest these wooden wedges are not the best idea simply because they will soak up some of the resin which you won't get back. So in fact it's better to use some rubber wedges or metal wedges or some heavy weights on the top. So after adding what's left of my cactus juice, as you can see there is not quite enough to cover the piece. So I get around this by displacing some of the fluid with a tomato can with some stones in it. The piece of wood should be covered sufficiently to allow in the drop of level as the wood absorbs the resin. Okay, so having popped the lid on the pressure pot and switched on the vacuum pump, we can now uh, sit back and watch the air being drawn out of the wood. So it's now a case of waiting until there are no more bubbles emerging from the wood. In this case I was able to leave the piece under vacuum overnight. After leaving it for another 12 hours under atmospheric pressure to absorb the resin, I'm now ready to remove it. 
So cactus juice is not uh, very cheap, so I'm just taking the trouble to drain it off uh, to recover as much of the resin as possible. Now cactus juice is a heat cured resin uh, and therefore the item must be baked in an oven for a couple of hours at 90 degrees in order to ensure that it's cured. You don't have to wrap up the piece in uh, tin foil but I do just to avoid making an unnecessary mess. Now the curing process can be a little bit smelly so it's not recommended that you use your domestic oven for this unless of course your wife is out in which case it's completely fine. Now having set the oven to 90 degrees centigrade or about 195 degrees Fahrenheit it's just a question now of leaving it there for a couple of hours to cure. While we're waiting for the resin to cure I can spend a little time recovering the cactus juice back to the container and also cleaning up all of the equipment that I've used. All of the equipment here I just clean with hot water and soap uh, with no problem at all. After a couple of hours... Oh. Hey William, what are you cooking there? Uh, it's some new cactus, it's a Mexican recipe. Yeah, it has to be cooked for two hours, so that's just about done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to switch it off and leave it to cool down until tomorrow. OK, so I baked this uh, piece of wood for about uh, two hours and 15 minutes yesterday and left it cool down overnight. And <coughs> the penetration seems to be quite good. Uh, there are also some tin foil stuck to it but that will all come off when it's put back on the lathe in a minute. Okay so I can remount the piece back on the lathe using the index marks I'd put on there before. Thereafter it's just a question of reprofiling the piece with the spindle gouge until I get it to the final shape that I was looking for. I did consider the necessity to drill out the central hole again, but uh, when I checked it, it was quite clean and uh, sandable to final finish. Here I'm just finishing off the rim of the bud vase. Um, as I cut down into the wood, I exposed a couple of voids, which became a cracks in the rim. But I decided to leave them there uh, as a feature of the piece. Now, because of the density of this material, it only required sanding from a 180 to 240. Now sanding complete, I can turn to Yorkshire Grit and Yorkshire Grit Microfine to make that foundation for my final finish. Now until recently, uh, this type of wood with lots of cracks and holes in it because of the burr, uh, I would not have used Yorkshire Grit on this because I found that the product got stuck in the holes and was impossible to remove. However, I have discovered that putting an air hose on the piece 
uh, at over 80 psi would in fact remove the product from all of the holes. Basically it's just a question of blasting it with air and keep wiping until all traces have disappeared. Now because of the very good foundation provided by Yorkshire Grit I decided that the final finish would be a few coats of Hampshire Sheen microcrystalline wax. My own experience, two or three coats of very thinly applied microcrystalline wax will give you a better finish than one heavier coat. So that's a pretty good finish. I just need to get the airline on here again now and get the final bits of product out of the holes and then part it off. I do really love the large range of colours and textures in this material uh, which has been preserved through the stabilisation process. It's quite amazing actually. Finally then uh, sanding off the base nice and flat and then applying a couple of coats of sanding sealer. Okay, so there we have it then, one stabilised Burr Elm bud vase. Looks more like a three inch mortar bomb than a bud vase. Possibly something to do with my military history. Uh, not a very exciting technical project, I can understand. More about stabilisation than anything else. But as I mentioned at the beginning, the wood did have, did have some history with me and I wanted to salvage it. And I'm quite happy with the result. Okay, so looking forward to next week's project. We're heading towards Easter, so I thought I would build upon the interest that was shown in my illuminated cauldron project and produce an illuminated golden goose's egg. So thanks for watching me this week and please join me next week to find out how my project went. <laughs>